What is up, beautiful internet people, lovely individuals from all across the globe? I'm sorry I'm clothed in a little bit more layers than usual. No ahigao hoodie today. But if you've ever lived anywhere where it's cold, you'll know the secret to staying warm is layers upon layers upon layers. And Lord knows what I need right now is a little comfy, a little bit of comfort, because it is getting terribly chilly these days. It is getting nice and cold. I've been gone a little bit. I was on a gaming session. I, I was focusing on my, my, you know, on my face on the keyboard for a little bit, so you'll have to excuse me. But now, now I'm, I'm chilling a little bit on that, and I'm ready to enjoy a holiday season, to enjoy the falling leaves with you fine folks once again. Today, I would like to talk about a topic that needs to be said, that needs to make, especially given the current times, I should say, needs to be addressed. And that is the potential oncoming draft. Now, it's pretty clear to me that governments all along the world are bracing for some huge conflict, specifically the United States. We can see a lot of increased U.S. activity all around the globe, especially in some global flashpoints, right? We currently have a war between Israel and Palestine going around. We have, you know, the U.S. operating, of course, in the sea around China and, you know, preparing and reinforcing and building new bases there for offensive. We have the United States surrounding Iraq and all sorts of bases. So we can kind of see where the next few global flashpoints are going to be just from a geopolitical standpoint. And you can kind of smell the incoming war. You can kind of tell there's something stirring, right? And I, I'm sure a lot of you have noticed as of late, there's been this recent pushback, this recent kind of attempt to bring us back into the fold, to bring uh, men, particularly white men, back into the you know good graces of societies. We're needed once again. They're calling upon us, finally. Finally, it's our point, it's our place to go and die for Israel. That's right. Now, truly, we can earn our place in society, in the very bottom of it, in the most hated spheres, by going and dying for global homogeny. Yes. Yes, now you, you, the fine listener, the fine viewer, can finally sacrifice yourself so that Hunter Biden can continue to keep his Ukrainian oil job. Now you too can die to help keep Hillary's emails a secret. Now you too can die so that the current president can prosecute the former president. Now you too can truly, truly contribute to a greater society. Of course, you, one could say that the recent pull away from wokeism, the recent pull away from anti-white hatred, which is wokeism, by the way, that's just, you know, woke is just another word for white hatred. You could just say that maybe, perhaps, from the people in power, from this current government, from these people, that this sudden shift away from those policies and on a corporate level, the shift away from a lot of this could just be cynical. It could just be momentary cynics to try and get a bunch of people to accept a draft and sort of you know, work towards making this great, great nation, I'm sure, even a little bit greater, right? Not watching it collapse as you should be, not wearing an anime-themed piece of clothing and hiding in your mom's basement while the entire rest of the world collapses while you sit and sip on some nice morning coffee. <sighs> no, 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 no. See, these people have learned from their anti-white hatred, from learned from their horrible rhetoric, and now they're here to really look out for you. All they need is your life, and you do not exist anymore. These people don't want you dead, and want to kill you, and want your children destroyed, and want your lineage gone, and want and hate everything about you, and want to deconstruct the society you built. No, 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 no. Now, now, they need you. And let me tell you what, it's time to die for them. So... Anyone with an IQ above room temperature can see that these people in this society really don't deserve your effort, don't deserve to be fought for, don't deserve your life, just objectively. I don't care what nation you were born in, the idea of nationalism died with the advent of globalism. Sorry, that works both ways, my friends. You can't deconstruct Western values, deconstruct Judeo-Christian values, deconstruct society as a whole, and then expect us to serve your new interests or serve your new masters by appealing to things you've deconstructed already. Uh-oh. You know, the cat is out of the bag on that one. And again, these people want you dead. If you're 
going to you know accept a draft then you're just simply aiding and abetting them so I would never suggest you dodge the draft or anything like that I wouldn't suggest that you show up with you know some sort of mental conditions me if the draft man comes I'm simply going to explain my ideals in the most racist way possible and probably get discharged for you know mental issues or something like that I don't think they're going to want me even if they try to send me a draft or draft me even though I just turned 36 I I don't know if I'm eligible or not. The laws on that are a little bit scuffy at the moment. Have to do a little bit more research to understand. But if they do try and draft me, I will take my prison sentence. I will conscientiously object. I will not die for people that hate me. I will not die so that, you know, the welfare queens can get another check. I will not die so that our corrupt politicians can continue to leech from me. I will not contribute to the society anymore. Throw me in jail. I'm not dying for you. I don't care. I'll serve the time with a smile on my face. And when I get out, my money will be waiting for me there. It'll be fine. You know, take it all, in fact. Go ahead. Rob me of my virtual, you know, money. I have the skills to pay the bills. I will make it all back. I will climb back to where I am here. You know, do whatever. You're not getting my life. I'm not dying for you. I am not aiding this horrible government. And I suggest you out there, dear listener, do everything in your power, no matter what they take from you to harm them. The most powerful form of resistance is just doing nothing. Period. So just do nothing. You don't have to die for these people. You don't have to contribute to society. You don't have to let them pull away your virgin brides and deny you all of the things that our ancestors had, all the things that are rightfully ours as men. You can just say no. And that's what you should do. Just period. You do not have to obey these sort of incoming political motions. And maybe the draft doesn't happen. Maybe they pull back because they realized it's a horrible idea. They, and they realistically are not going to be able to, you know, jail as many draft dodgers as are going to exist. Realistically, it's not just mathematically possible. They may try, and Godspeed to them if they try, but, you know, I would advocate in your best interest, and this is coming from someone that doesn't really have any reason to lie to you, I'm not shilling a Patreon like most content creators. I'm not shilling YouTube AdSense money. I don't care. I literally don't care. I'm just saying what I think is best and what I practice myself, period. So, you know, you can think or you, you know, you can think whatever you want, you can believe whatever you want, but that's what I think are the proper values. Hopefully you share my opinion. Either way, salut.